Hey yo, what's going on everyone? Nathan here. So one of my most recent videos I made was a video comparing GoodNotes 5 to Notability for the iPad. It was an in-depth review and a comparison between the two and it was my thoughts on which one I thought was just the better app for note taking for a college student. And a lot of you while watching that video have asked me how I actually take my notes as it seemed like I had a good process or whatever. And so I wanted to sit down today and actually step by step kind of give you my view of how I take notes and what's worked for me as an engineering student. I'm gonna put it out there right now, like these aren't the prettiest notes, but this is what has worked for me. And I feel like I have a pretty good like organization system that I do. And the way I take my notes is pretty consistent throughout. And I'm, I'm just hoping to like give you all like some kind of tips out there to help you a little more organized, help you also take your math notes that you might need and just kind of like my perspective on it. So for the cases of this video, I'm gonna be using GoodNotes 5, but my note taking process is exactly the same in Notability or GoodNotes 5. It's just the slight differences within the apps. And I'm just using GoodNotes 5 because it's what I've been using all semester. So all like my most recent documents and homeworks are in that app. So with that being said, let's go over to the iPad now. So I'm going to launch GoodNotes 5 down here at the bottom, and I want to talk about my organization real quick. So the first thing you're gonna see is senior year part one, as I'm in my first semester of senior year. Open that up, and you got my five classes right here, all neatly organized. Let's go to MEE 431. When you open up that, you can see I have a couple different documents, a notebook for kind of quick notes at the bottom, and then you got a homework folder, when you open it up, it's got my homeworks in there. Go back, and you got a lecture folder which has all the lecture slides that my professor has provided me. So one thing I wanna quickly cover before I get into like how I actually take my notes is kind of my settings for my note taking process. So right up here, I use the ball pen as it's the only option with like a consistent line throughout. There's no pressure sensitivity and it kind of just keeps your handwriting more neat. The fountain pen is, I would say, the next best. You can really customize the tip sharpness and the pressure sensitivity. Um, and then I really don't recommend the brush pen. It's super sensitive, so I really don't like this one that much. It really does change up like your, your handwriting. My pen thickness is 0.4 millimeters. I kind of find that this is the best for me. Any thicker and like my letters kind of start jumbling together because I kind of write small. Any smaller, it just kind of looks awkward. And then when I'm making titles, I use the second um, pen thickness. I leave that at 0.7 millimeters. Just kind of make my title stand out from the rest. So how I usually take my notes is I kind of have like a color system. So I use black for the large majority of all like my, my math, my kind of like just note taking in itself, any words I have, I use in black. Then I use blue for kind of like little, kind of like cues or notes as well as steps. If there's like steps to a specific problem, I will write that in blue. Red is for very important information. If there's something that I could easily forget, I will write it in red, usually star it, just something to like make it pop out. And whenever I'm going back and reviewing, I always read my red notes because those were important ones that I knew I would need for later. And then I always write my equations in purple. I use this bright purple color up here. It's a very nice purple um, and it stands out from the other colors. And it's just really good to know equations and be able to easily pinpoint them and which problems because knowing which equation to use in engineering is like 60% of the problem. When you know what equation to use, it's usually just plug and chug or it's finding one or two more variables to solve for what you need to find. And I always write on the squared paper. Um, I just feel that the squared paper, it really helps me with kind of keeping things very symmetrical, horizontal. If I'm drawing graphs, it's easy to see if something's even or relative to another. It's very easy for me to draw shapes, diagrams and stuff like that. And I just like it. I always use the graph paper, but you can use whatever you like the best. Those are kind of like my pen settings I use. Now I wanna show you kind of how I take my notes. So this right here, I recently did this was a review for one of my classes, manufacturing processes. So here at the top, you can see I made a title with the 0.7 millimeter thickness pen. And so as I scroll through here, you're gonna notice that all of my equations here are in purple. And that's how I've just always kind of note taken. 
and it really just makes it stand out when going through afterwards and trying to find which equations to use. So right here for this exam review, as you can see, I would write down the practice problem that I was about to attempt to do right up here. And then underneath that, how I usually start my problems is I will write down the givens and then any equation I write down the first time I will write in purple. And then for this specific problem, it was just plug and chug, just plug in the givens and you're able to find it. And so I always do my math on the left side of the page and I always make my diagrams on the right side of the page. And I try to make them look nice. Like I'm not trying to like be a professional artist over here. Like I'm just trying to make them stand out a little bit and look good. So like I won't put a lot of time into it, but like I will draw like decent diagrams just for like myself, you know, like going through and like looking at some of these things I drew, like I like how they came out. So this right here is gonna be a time lapse of how I actually go through a problem. Just so you can kind of see like my thought process and like what goes on per step. And so please sit back and enjoy this. So right here, I wasn't too sure where these values came from in the equation itself. So I did a little like looking at the lecture slides and stuff, and I figured out that these values, which is sigma right here, come from these on the graph and on the original length. And so I marked them in highlighter just to see a visual cue of like where they came from. So I just have a better understanding of like where they come from next time I get a problem like this. So another pro tip I wanna give you engineers out there if you're taking notes on your iPad, there's plenty of free like graphing calculator apps out there. I have one called Taculator. <laughs> so it works very well. So I'm gonna open it right here. Just, you don't have to pay for anything. Press the X button. And then you're gonna press the top three buttons at the top of the page. And you're gonna go to the little one on the right. And you're gonna go back to your notes section. And so right here, you can, you can write, you can do whatever you want for this and then you can make your calculations. So right here, 168,000 divided by 200 divided by 1 million, boom. And there you go. So it's just a cool little thing, like if you don't have room on your little desk for your calculator or not, and you only wanna just use this, there are free calculator apps that you can just pull up and use side by side with your notes and homework, and it's just a very convenient thing to have. So now the next type of note taking I wanna show you is with lectures. So with this, you can easily download PDFs from whatever kind of school service you have. So my school goes through Blackboard. So to do that, you're gonna to go to the app or wherever you can locate these files right here. So I'm gonna pick the PDF I wanna use, this review solutions, press the top three buttons on the right, export, and you're gonna export it to GoodNotes. And then right at the bottom of this menu, you're gonna import as new and it's gonna come up as a brand new document for the PDF that you can write on. So from here, just kind of going through quickly, like I just make little notes, again, with my color system, things that are more important than others that the professor says I'll change the color for. I will make little graphs on the side and stuff like that. Right here was an example problem. I literally from the exact problem I just showed you, this is where that came from. 0 0.23 down from yield point, five from original length, and it's in red. So that's like where I found that information from beforehand to help me solve that problem. 
One thing I like to do with this, so let's say there's an example problem and you run out of room on the slide itself. So you go over here and you press the page with the plus symbol in it and you go right here. You can add any type of paper you want and I'm gonna add a squared one and it's gonna put it right below. I don't like how it like doesn't line up properly but it is what it is. And so you can come right on here and then you got more space. You can write whatever you want on it, um, make graphs and stuff. And so I usually do that with lectures if I need more room. And then kind of going through a little more of this lecture, you can see that I highlight different things that I find important. And I use a lot of arrows to like kind of connect things visually for myself. So right here with this example, the Sigma engineering right here, the engineering stress, I make an arrow to where it goes into the equation and it just helps me visualize it for later on to help me understand the equations better. And so the next thing I want to show you is exporting a document. So to export one, you can either press the export button up here, you can export the whole document itself or just the single page. Or if you press on the four squares at the top left, then you can select which pages you want to export. Here I'll do these ones and export and then you can save it as a pdf and i usually save it right to my files and then i can upload it to the assignment page or i can email it to myself so i can access it on my computer or wherever else you want it so i just want to go to notability quick just to kind of show you that i have been doing this process for a while so this was from last semester this is thermodynamics heat transfer heat transfer don't, don't let me get that wrong and so as you can see like kind of the same process and everything Again, different color right here for stuff that I would like to do. My diagram right here on the right. Notability just updated and it has a laser pointer now. <laughs> That's dope. Yeah, going through and stuff. And again, just kind of showing you like how I've always kind of taken notes, different stuff like that. So yeah, there it is. I just thought I would kind of give you all like a quick rundown of how I take my notes, do my homework, study for everything as an engineering student in college. Um, I know it can be a lot and really just like the more organized you can be, kind of the better off you are. So that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you learned something new or that you can take away something and apply it to your own study methods or note taking as that's really all I wanted this to do for you. And so again, if you like this video or if you learned something new, then please drop a like down below and subscribe as I don't want you to miss any future content I have. And if you have any other further questions using an iPad for school, whether staying organized, kind of productivity with your life, then let me down below and maybe I can make a video on that. Just trying to help you all out. And so with that being said, I hope you all have a great day and cheers everyone.